and welcome to today's Thursday business tip. So today we are going to be going through the expenses section of Schedule C. So this is another area where there are potential red flags that the IRS look for in order to try to put someone on their audit radar. So you just want to be very careful and remember whether you're preparing your return or not the information that you are giving your tax preparer also can still make you um, a candidate for an audit if you are not following the rules appropriately. So you want to make sure that you're very careful and that you follow the rules. Let's talk about the expenses. So in part two of the Schedule C, your expenses are there for you to put in. They really prefer if you categorize your expenses into the items that they have listed out. And there are a lot of things that you can combine in in order to meet these categories. So let's take for example advertising. So advertising would be any ads you run, um, any Google ads, any Facebook ads, it would be marketing material. So if you have purchased t-shirts, if you have now I'm, it has to be and we're going to come back to that in a second. Okay, so if you purchase business cards, if you purchase postcards, if you purchased a big sign to put at a trade show, all of that is advertising. Okay. Um, some of the other things, uh, insurance, so if you have insurance on your business, if you had legal and professional services, so if you had your tax return prepared, if you had someone file for your federal ID, those would go in there. Office expenses would be you know, any type of office supply that you had, uh, rent or lease, so if you are leasing a business property, such as a building that would go in there. Um, repairs and maintenance would be just the ones related to your business supplies. So supplies would be anything that is uh, not included in cost of goods sold that is not an office supply. So let's see um, a cricket machine that would be a supply and you have to be very careful when you are deducting expenses. So uh, the IRS has very specific rules related to whether you can write it off immediately or not. So if you purchase something for your business, there are rules that you have to follow in order to make sure that you do not need to capitalize it and depreciate it over a number of years. And the IRS determines that number of years. So that is also on here if you do have something that needs to be depreciated. So that's um, number 13. Okay, and this is how you determine it. Did you spend more than $500 on that item? Guess what? If you spent more than $500 on that item and you didn't take a section 179, you have to put that on their depreciation schedule and you have to pick the life that they have specified and the expense for that will be deducted over the number of years. So let's take for example, let's say that you bought a computer. You spent $600 on the computer. The IRS says that the useful life of a computer is five years, which of course is ridiculous, but it is what it is. Then they would take that $600 and over a five-year period, you would have a certain amount that would be expensed over that five-year period instead of being able to expense it all at one time. So you have to be very aware when you're purchasing items that you may have to be putting those on depreciation instead of expensing it immediately. Okay, so taxes and licenses. This would be um, sales tax that you paid, taxes that you paid for your business. Licenses, okay, so that would be your LLC. That would be a business license that you needed in order to business 
do business in your county. Okay, so travel, meals, and entertainment is next. Travel would be anything for such as um, airfare, hotel, rental car. All of those would go and travel. Okay, and then you would split out anything that is a meal or entertainment. So meals and entertainment, you only get 50% of it. And there's a really good possibility that that is going to go away completely. They will not be giving you meals in the future is really the direction that they're going in. Okay, the next item is utilities. That's pretty self-explanatory, but it has to be only if you have utilities that are paid solely by your business and are used only by your business. So I'll give you an example of that. I have my own internet. It's not used for anything other than my business. So that would go in the utilities. Utilities would be power, internet, um, telephone, water, anything along those lines. Okay, the next item is wages. So this is if you have uh, employees. So you would put that there. And then other expenses would be something that you would need to break out and list off. You do need to individually list them if they do not fall into one of these categories. Okay, so one of the big ones is contract labor. That's number 11. So I wanted to talk about this separately because this is a very important item. Okay, um, contract labor is if you are paying someone to help you in your business and they are not an employee. Let's, let's look at an example. If you have someone doing posting for you, they're posting on your social media, if you have someone doing moderating for your business, if you have someone designing t-shirts for you, that's contract labor and you have to give them a 1099 if you pay them over $600. <coughs> Unless they are a corporation, you are required to give them a 1099. I know a lot of people don't understand this and they don't know it, but you can't record those expenses and take them on your taxes unless you have given that individual a 1099. So I have someone who does um, Pinterest for me and at the end of the year um, between January and February, it has, has to be before February 1st, I have to put together a 1099 showing everything that I've paid to her and I have to issue that to her so that I can record it on my taxes. Now you can do this by hand. It's not you know, illegal to do it by hand. But there are some rules and regulations you need to understand about 1099s. So that is really a completely separate subject, but I want you to be aware that if you are paying someone to do something specifically for your business, you need to give them a 1099. It is a requirement by the IRS and that's how they are determining that people who are reporting their income are reporting it correctly. So that doesn't mean that if you are in a business coaching group that you have to give that person a 1099. That means if you are paying someone to do something specifically for your business, then you have to give them a 1099. Make sure you do that so that you can record that as an expense because if you can't record it as an expense then you know what that's going to be income and you're not going to get that expense. So let's talk about a few other things I have seen people do that's wrong in the past. Let's talk about clothing. I have seen people who um, who are do lives and you know such as us and they say, oh, I had to buy, I had to buy something from Stitch Fix for my business. 
Nope, that's not deductible. That is not deductible. The only time that you can deduct something that is clothing is if it is a requirement to do your business. So you could purchase a t-shirt that had your logo on it and wear that. Absolutely, that's marketing. That's advertising. You can do that. You know, you cannot buy a pair of shoes because, you know, you walk around barefoot and say that's tax deductible. Because guess what? It's not. There are very few uh, individuals who are actually able to deduct clothing. And that includes clergy. And that really only is if they purchase it for mis ministerial use only. So like their vestments and all of their you know, cloaks, you wouldn't use that in your everyday life. Okay, and um, some performing artist. So, you know, they might purchase clothing or make clothing that is specifically for um, a show. Yes, so they can, they can deduct that. But if you are going to be using it for everyday use, if it's a t-shirt, a pair of pants, it's um, a pair of shoes. If you bought a birch box so that you could do it online, guess what? You can't deduct that. Don't do it. You will get yourself in trouble. It is one of the biggest areas that people are audited on. So don't do it. If you bought a pair of shoes because, <clears throat> you know, you went somewhere and it was really cold, so you bought a pair of boots, mm -mm. that's not... Even if you went there for training, it's not, it's a general use item and you can't deduct it. Okay, so don't do that. So you have to be really careful. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other items that you can deduct. Um, you can deduct gifts up to $25. You can't deduct it if it's more than $25. <coughs> and that is per person per year. A married couple would count as a person. So if you gave out um, small gifts, then uh, you could deduct that. It does not include gift wrap. And it really has to be the exact amount. And it has to be related to your business. So if you um, gave a little gift to your customers to thank them for being a customer, you can write that off as long as it is below $25. So let's talk about some of the things that are not deductible. Meals that you eat at your home, not deductible. Travel expenses of your family members. So let's say that you um, go to a conference for your business and your family goes with you. You can deduct your travel expenses, not your family extravagant entertainment you know you don't want to be doing that because it is very it is a very huge area that is audited entertainment um, <coughs> weddings country club memberships those are not deductible even if you think that you're using your country club membership for your business it is a general use item so you can use that whether you're there doing business or not. So that is not tax deductible. What you don't want to do is you don't want to intermingle your personal and business accounts because that is a big no-no. And the IRS can come in and say, mm, that's personal use and throw that expense out. And then you're left owing money on an income that you didn't really make. So you have to be super careful. You want to keep your expenses separate. Make sure that you are recording them accurately. So if you are traveling, um, if you're eating, then you need to keep the receipt on the back of the receipt. Right. This was for XYZ conference that discussed blah, blah, blah. You know, be very specific. If you had meals with potential customers or customers, you want to write down the customers' names and you want to write down what you discussed. 
this is how you will maintain that expense because that's one of the areas that is really audited heavily. Let's talk about the other area that's audited heavily. So business use of home. <clears throat> there are very, very specific rules related to what you can use as far as business use of your home. So business use of your home is only allowed if the area is designated only for that business. So if you have a multi-purpose room and you have your office in there, can't use it. If you have um, a craft room and your children are coming in and playing in that craft room, you can't use it. It has to be a designated area. So you see right here, I'm in this room and it is used solely for my business. People don't come in here and watch TV. Uh, they don't come in here and play games. Nothing is done in this room except for my business. And honestly, you wouldn't want to because it's full of craft supplies. So you just have to be very careful. So what you do in order to use it, you measure the square foot of the room that you're using versus the square feet of your house. So let's say my craft room is 200 square feet and my house is 4,000 square feet. So I would take that 2,000, 200 square feet and I would enter that in on my taxes and I would take the 4,000 and I would enter that in on my taxes. So you know what, that's not really gonna be a huge big red flag to the IRS because it's a small portion of the house I make sure I always have documents showing that you know this this room is used for my business although it's pretty obvious <laughs> so that's what you want you want to be very specific you can only use it if it's a designated area so it's very important so what can you deduct for your business use of your home well you can deduct a portion of your mortgage payment you can deduct a portion of your utilities. You can deduct a portion of your phone, internet. So there are two types of expenses when it is relating to business use of your home. There's a direct expense and there's an indirect expense. Direct expenses would be, like in my case, um, if I had my own internet, that would be a direct expense. It's just related to my business. If you have, um, let's say you have a she shed, a he, you know, or a shed of some kind on your property and you are paying rent on that, it is still um, part of your home because it is on your property, but you are paying an expense for that. That would be a direct expense as long as you are using that for your business. Now you couldn't put lawn mowers in there and your business stuff. Okay, unless you were a lawn mowing service. So that's the case that you would have direct expenses. So what it does is um, if you use Schedule A, that's itemized deductions, it takes some of that off of the Schedule A and puts it onto your business. Uh, is helpful because there are certain things that you couldn't take off on your taxes that you would otherwise be able to such as your mortgage, um, your utilities, insurance, things like that. So it is a great thing to use just use it wisely. It is absolutely something that is audited on Schedule C. So again remember if it's reasonable if they see oh okay they're using 100 square feet out of 2,000 square feet. Yeah, that's fine. They expect that. If all of a sudden your mortgage is $10,000 a month and you're writing, they're going to be like, what? No. So you just be reasonable. Use common sense. Think about what you're putting on your taxes. Make sure it is an actual expense and that you're really using it for business and business only. Can't be a multi-purpose use can't be a multi-purpose room. One very important factor is to that your business 
is that office use in your home for your business cannot result in a loss for your business. So let's say that you had a $2,000 profit for the year and then you put in your business office expense of $2,100 and then all of a sudden you have loss. The IRS will not allow that so just keep that in mind. It cannot be the thing that takes your business from a profit to a loss. One other important thing that I want to talk to you about is self-employment tax. So if you are making a profit at your business, you are going to be subject to self-employment tax. What that means is that you have to pay both your portion and the business portion of, of Social Security. You will be paying 6.2% <coughs> plus 1.45% for Medicare. So you have to double that. So you will be paying 12.4% for Social Security <coughs> and 2.9% for Medicare. So that can be a large amount. So there's a good and a bad with it. Um, half of it, so 6.2% plus 1.45 will actually be deducted as an expense. You get both the um, expense and the tax burden. So it offsets it a little bit. However, just keep that in mind. So if you are making money in your business, it is a really good idea to start setting aside money so that you can pay your taxes. The best idea is to make estimated payments throughout the year. So what you can do is you can take the amount of taxes that you had for the year versus the amount of income and let's say it was, um, say your gross income was 45000 for last year and your taxes were 6500 so for every $7 you make you need to set aside a dollar. So you would want to look, look at your income quarterly and estimate based on how much income and expense you had and go ahead and start paying that tax. So if you pay it quarterly, it's not a big deal at the end of the year and you know you're not stuck with a $6,500 payment. <coughs> the other thing to keep in mind is the IRS does have payment plans so if you get to the end of the year and you haven't paid for anything and you're going to owe, you can set up an installment agreement with the IRS so don't panic and whatever you do make sure you file your taxes. What you don't want to do is not file them because you will end up with penalties and interest and it will be very difficult for you to catch up. You're better off if you just go ahead and set up an installment agreement. The IRS understands and they will work with you. So just if you get in trouble, make sure that you reach out to the IRS and get them to work with you. Set up that installment agreement. Okay, so remember, just be very careful when you're filling out your taxes. Just remember that the three biggest areas that are audited all the time, and all three are on Schedule C. There is the home office use, there is travel expense, especially entertainment. <clears throat> and the last one is vehicle use. So make sure you follow the rules in those areas. I hope this series helped you to be a little bit more prepared for your taxes this year. It will help you and it will help your tax repair if you use one. And remember, I have a wonderful success path that helps with learning how to run your business, how to be successful, how to start social media campaigns, and how to get your name out there. All the information you need will be in the description below, and I will see you again for next Thursday's business tip. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.